Hello, Robert. Hello, Hello, Robert here. This is Robert. Hello, Robert. Hi, Hi there. Um, Thank this is Kyle. Pardon? This is Kyle. Oh, hello, hello, Kyle. Hi. You okay? Uh, I'm, I'm here as well, Robert. Glenn, the one you originally contacted. So there's two of us here, just to let you know. Yes, yes. Oh, which which Kingdom Hall was that? Because I tried to get through to several this morning and nobody answered the phone. I forget which one yours was. This one, it's, it's Sunderland West. Sunderland West, yes. Oh, right, I remember, yes. I remember now, yes. That's good, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we were just falling back to have a, a bit of a discussion on some of the questions that you originally had when you first got in touch. Um, I've, I've moved on now. I'm looking at the Red Revelation book, Revelation, the Grand Climax at Hand, and I'm, I'm, right, I'm going it. through that book at the moment, so I'm not really interested in other things, really. Okay, I see. So how, if you don't mind me asking, how have you gotten your hand on that? Because that's quite a... An intense book for a lot of people. Um, I got it from a charity shop. Ah, oh, yeah, they, yeah. You pick them up occasionally, and I'm quite. I've got a, a library of over th a thousand books. I've just moved flat, and you wouldn't believe the state of my flat. It's such a mess. I think I've got. I think I've counted fifteen bookcases. Wow! wow. <laughs> and I still can't get all the books on the bookcases. Oh, yeah, I feel like that's, that's just like Glenn. That's you. Know, that is me. <laughs> me, I'm, I'm the same. I'm the same, Robert. Uh -huh. So, what do you make? Of, what do you make of Revelation? Then you've been reading it. You know, what do you what do you make of it? Um. Well, I, it's, it's a big, big book. Yes, um, I've I've got it here in front of me. Um, <clears throat> two five one, page two five one. Um, yeah, you quote to us. Yeah, the seven heads of that ferocious beast stand for seven mountains or seven kings. Both terms are used scripturally to refer to governmental powers. In the Bible, six world powers are mentioned as having an impact on the affairs of God's people. Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece and Rome. Of these, five had already come and gone by the time John received his revelation, whereas Rome is still very much a world power. And then on the next page, 252... Um, I was reading from, sorry, 251 I was reading, this is 252. It pitches them, but the seventh one is the Anglo-American world power. And I'm kind of a That's bit clear. puzzled about that. Right. Um, it's purely based on the progression of world powers. How mm -hmm. one has succeeded the other. So the Anglo-American world power... Actually, we had a talk on it this morning. It's a, a branch, it's a development from Rome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, it follows on in sequence, you understand? All of these word powers, would they be seen as demonic, as being agents of the, the devil? Please, please forgive me, I'm just having my lunch as, as, as you talk. I can, do you mind if I eat while, while I listen to you? No, you, you, no, no, yeah, thank no, you. Choose, you go. Thank you. Choose, choose, choose you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're quite correct. We believe uh, that the, these world powers are satanic, that they are developed on the basis of independence from God and are satanic and have persecuted God's people. Um, they're not approved by God at all. They are actually um, definitely um, developments of Satan to divert mankind away from theocracy or rule by God. And this would be all of these seven world powers. They're listed on page 252 as Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and Anglo-America. All of them, yeah. Yes, all of them. In including, I mean, Anglo would mean Britain, wouldn't it? Yes, yes Anglo-American. It's a dual world power. That's why it's depicted um, by the... Um, there's another prophecy in the Bible, it's Daniel, Daniel chapter 2, and it's pictured there as well by a dual world power. And it would be seen as satanic? or the, what, what would be satanic about it? Would it be the authority that it derives authority from, or what? Very good, yes, that's exactly what we would say. But um, we, we, we believe that what happened in the beginning was uh, mankind broke free from, from Jehovah God himself, has established his own rulership, but the original rulership was for the world to be under the control and rulership of Jehovah God himself. So all these powers defy that principle, and they work against it, not in harmony with it. Does that make sense? 
I'm trying to understand. Um, I'm not very happy with that because that would mean that the British government is basically deriving its authority from the devil, wouldn't it? This, because the Anglo-America would be the seventh head of the wild beast. Correct, yes, yes, yes. We, 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 we would uh, say to you that we believe that's the case. We're not actually saying that everybody is demonic, you understand? But we would say that it's controlled by the, um, the one who has defied God, and that is Satan the devil. So these rulerships are permitted by Jehovah, but certainly not approved, because they are under the control and direction of the one that defied God, and that is Satan the devil, and highly influenced by him as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, that, uh, uh, would that mean, uh, 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 would that yeah. therefore mean that looking at the picture at the bottom of 252, it's got a picture of the Statue of Liberty with an American flag beside it, and a picture of Parliament in London with the British flag beside it, and it says yeah. Anglo-America. Would that mean that the head of states of both countries are controlled by the devil? which is something I would be really um, very worried about and cautious and very unhappy with that statement. Yeah, well, we can understand that. We can understand that. And um, the question is, if you think of what these powers have done, um, ask yourself the question, what's been the history of these world powers, the Anglo-American world powers? What, what have they done? Um, well, I really asked a question, and you've asked me a question back. I want to know... Right. Anglo-America, are you saying that they get their power from Satan? Anglo-America is the seventh head, if that's the first question. Does it get its power from Satan? That's the second head question. Oh, yeah, good, yeah. Okay, we'll answer that then. <coughs> Excuse me. When you think of the history of all these world powers, the bloodshed is horrendous. Um, they've engaged in, um, in all kinds of wars. And that's been true even in our time. So the question is, how would that be approved by God, you see? Now, we couldn't countenance that, that that's approved by Jehovah God himself. It must be under the control of an evil mind to promote all of that. Now, that was supposed to be democracy. Uh, it's supposed to be democracy, but it's what it's done. It's uh, caused undue bloodshed and problems uh, throughout the world. So um, we, we, we would say yes. What the Bible says is true. These um, these rulerships are under not under God Himself. Otherwise, they certainly wouldn't have done the things they've done. So, which rulerships and under who? <coughs> All these rulerships. Right. Well, name them. We, um, be specific, because you're being vague. Which it, it says the succession of seven world powers. All of them. All of them. Categorically, all the ones mentioned in that image there. Yeah. Right. It says Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo Persia, yeah. Greece, Rome, Anglo America. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, what? They're all under Satan's control. Including Anglo America. Including Anglo America, yeah. And Anglo would mean Britain and America would mean the US of A. Yeah, in their, in their coalition. And would that include the head of state? states for both of those countries? Yes, it would, because these rulers rule um, under... I mean, you think of the British Empire. Uh, are, are you historically... Um, are, you sound an intelligent fella. Uh, have you read history? Yes. I've read history, yes. When you think of these rulers, um, right back, going right back, all of these rulers have promoted uh, nationalism, and nationalism has led to bloodshed and world wars. So, I know, I know the point you're making. You think of, say, the Queen today. Yes. Now, she's not, she's not necessarily leading armies out because all this has changed. But nonetheless, it's what they represent. They still represent that rulership in defiance of God's kingdom. Jesus Christ taught us to pray for God's kingdom to come, for God's rulership, for God's will to be done on the earth. All these rulers... They, they take up their own power in defiance of that. So oh, hold on, hold on. You're saying something different now. You're saying they take up their own power, but earlier on you were saying they took power from Satan. No, so but which is it? <clears throat> well, what they do is they, they accept that power, don't they? They accept, you know, that they are rulers and kings, <clears throat> but they still are under the control of Satan the devil. Right. 
that's all of these seven powers, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, Anglo-America. Is that right? It is. That's it, yes. And the head well, of state of Britain, where would the monarch get the authority from? They get the authority from the wild beast. And the wild, the wild beast, beast is what? The I wild thought... beast, in, 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 this, in this instance that you're talking about, is the Anglo-American world power. No, hold on, so that doesn't get... make sense. You can't say the British they, they... monarch... No, hold on, you can't say the British monarch gets her authority from the wild beast, who is the seven-headed wild beast that includes Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Media, Persia, Greece, Rome, Anglo-America. No, no, the the, the monarch can't get his or her authority from Anglo-America because they are the head of state of, Ang of, 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 of Britain and the presidency right, of the US is the head of state of America. Well, British monarchs um, have taken their rulership, haven't they? It's been, part, it's been the British Empire, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. But of course now, now you've got that welded together into this dual world power, the Anglo-American world power. So that's where these monarchs have got the power from, they've got it from these um, these organisations, haven't they? Right, well, you said something different earlier. You said they got their power from Satan. But now you're saying well, they get their power from an organisation, and I'm not sure what organisation you're referring to. It all goes back to who is behind them, and that is Satan the devil. All these various empires, um, if you read the book of Daniel, you'll find that it talks about that, 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 that they've actually been demon-controlled. There's more scriptural proof uh, in that, even in the book of Revelation, they all coincide. So, yes, we would say all these world powers that you've just mentioned there from the book and up to the current one, Anglo-American world power, they all... Well, let, let's be specific. By Anglo-American world power, you're talking about the presidency of the United States and the crown of England. Cr crown of Great Britain, yes? You there? Hello? You there? Hello, have I lost you? Have I lost you? Hello? 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 Hi there, Robert. Yeah, I think we were cut off. Sorry about that. Oh, I'm Sorry about that. It's all right. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, I'm just looking for clarification. Anglo-America must refer to Britain, the Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and America would be the United States. Would that include the head of states of those countries? Yes, yes. They are so, under the influence of, as we said, that beast which is the Satan, the devil. Right, including the British crown. I'm, I'm kind of a bit shocked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, well, that would... Can we just clarify that? We're not saying that the Queen is demonic. Yes, yes, I understand, I understand that? that. I'm asking about the office. I'm asking about yeah. the authority that she has. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. The authority of her office. Okay. Well, I'm well, I'm, well, I'm kind of shocked and that... very hurt. <laughs> well, well, when, uh, okay. <clears throat> when you think about that now, the Queen. <clears throat> excuse me. The Queen doesn't wield any real uh, authority because you know that was taken away from the British monarchy. So what we're really saying is, it's the British government, it's the Anglo-American government, it's the, it's the um, uh, American government and the British government, because the Queen, the Queen doesn't have any, any longer any legal power as such. She does She's, have considerable um, power. She, 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 she does have considerable power, power that's unofficial. So she will yes. influence prime ministers, she'll influence foreign secretaries and home secretaries, she'll speak to field marshals in the army and admirals in the navy, she'll speak to high yes. court judges, and she will um, influence these people by her, by her well, direction. But, um, well, I mean... Respect, yeah. I, I, w I, I wouldn't agree with that, uh, Robert, if I may. Um, the Queen is a figurehead, and certainly, as you, tru as you truly say, she has connections with them, but I would emphasise that she has no legal authority over them. Only the British government holds that. Well, she has the right to withhold her signature from, from statutes. She doesn't have to sign legal documents if she disapproves of them. Well, and she has well, been she... known in the past to speak to prime ministers, foreign secretaries, home secretaries, generals and admirals, and um, defence secretaries, 
and explain that she's not happy with something and explain why. So she might not um, have direct power, but she has considerable um, uno unofficial power. And, um, you know, she's a lady who's worked very hard for this country for many decades. She's in her 90s. She's an elderly lady. And um, I would certainly be deeply offended by your comment that this um, dear lady who's so loyal to this country, um, I would be furious that, you know, your comment that she gets her authority from the devil is something that I would be vehemently opposed to and very, very deeply hurt. Okay, well, you, you've, got a right, you've got a right to your opinion. Yeah. Um, and we recognise that. But nonetheless, we're really saying what the Bible says. Okay. Well, where does the Bible say that the... Um, um, <laughs> British and the American governments, including their heads of state, get their authority from the devil. Just from Revelation that you've been reading. Where in Revelation? Well, you've been reading what chapter you've been reading. If you read the whole of Revelation, you'll find that's emphasised more and more. It, it does not mention. Just it does not mention America. the United States of America. And it does not mention Great Britain in the book of Revelation anywhere. It mentions the seven-headed beast, right? And there are other beasts mentioned in Revelation as well. But the seven-headed beast are all these empires that have come by descent one from another or succeeded one from another. So that's why we come to the conclusion that the scarlet-colored beast... It says in Revelation 17 that this... Um, scarlet coloured beast um, is, is disgusting in God's eyes. World rulership by humans is not accepted by God himself because he's the rightful sovereign, not the Queen, not the British government, not any empire. I certainly believe... Please, sorry, sorry, please, sorry, go on, yes, go on. I'm, I'm, I'm why, listening. Why not, why not just uh, chew that over a bit and then... We can have a conversation if yeah. you want to. Yeah, OK, yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, but just give me a little bit of notice. Send me a text and give me a little bit of notice next time. That's absolutely great. Um, right. Thank and you we, very we, much. We really appreciate yeah. hearing your views. We can understand how you feel, and we, we, we recognise your feelings on that. Mm. But could, if we could just emphasise to you that the rulership of the future is not under any government by men, Yes, I, I fully understand that. I fully understand that. Like Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus yes. is coming back at the second coming after Armageddon to rule. I believe that. It would be a literal, physical rulership upon this earth. Revelation 5.10. He shall reign, we shall reign upon the earth because we shall be co-rulers with Christ if we're in the new covenant relationship with, with Christ. Could I just say something here, looking at the Revelation book? I'm looking at page 254. And it mentions the League of Nations in paragraph nine, um, yes. saying how Great Britain and, of course, other countries such as America caused the League of Nations in 1919. Yes. This is the um, eighth head. Now, it says it's the eighth head. What, why called an eighth king in paragraph eight? Because, it, as it says in the scriptures, it comes from the others. It's an offshoot. Mm -hmm. it, it was promoted by the Anglo-American world power. Yeah, but you see, every yeah. different religious group has a different interpretation of what the seven-headed wild beast is and what the eighth head that comes out of the seven-headed wild beast is. There is no passage in the Bible that says the seven-headed wild beast is Egypt, Syria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, Anglo-America. That's somebody's opinion. Right. And different Wait, religious okay. groups, Christadelphians, Seventh-day Adventists, a whole host of Pentecostal groups, um, produce literature that have different interpretations as to what the seven uh, heads of the wild beast are and what the eighth king is. Now, in paragraph eight, it says that Anglo-American power founded the uh, eighth head, which is the League of Nations. I'll just read Not it. Halfway down exactly. paragraph eight. Well, in 1919, the Anglo-American power was the ascendant head. Um, previous six head had fallen. And then it says, was the moving force in establishing the League of Nations and is still the major promoter and financial support of the United Nations, which they then go on in paragraph 9 and 10 to say that this League of Nations and United Nations is the eighth satanic king, the eighth head. Now, have I got that right? You've got that right. Right. But in 1992... 
the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society applied and joined the UN, taking out NGO status. And to comply with that NGO status, they published numerous articles, usually once or twice a year in the Awake magazine. But there was um, a birthday celebration for the 50th anniversary of the UN or the 40th anniversary of the UN. I forget which would have been probably the 40th in 1995. They had to produce those articles to comply with their NGO status. And they were rather groveling articles where they supported the aims and the ideals of the UN. Where did you get that from? Because that's categorized rubbish. It's all over the internet. It was, it, it was exposed by The Guardian. Oh, right. The Guardian, on the 8th of October 2001, produced the first of three articles exposing the fact that while Jehovah's Witnesses were condemning the UN as satanic, you joined the UN. That first article... That, is, that, that first is absolute, absolute categoric rubbish. You're listening to people that don't agree with our views. We have had nothing categorically nothing of that nature at all. Whoever done that, you better look that up and see what the proof is. You haven't because looked into this. You haven't looked into was, this because the was, UN Robert, has... Robert, Robert, excuse Robert, me, Robert, excuse me, I have a letter Robert, from the Robert, UN Robert. saying you were members. I have a letter from the UN saying you were members and you left the next day. After that Guardian article, you left the next day on the 9th of October. That is categoric rubbish. You I haven't looked... I don't know where you've got all that from, but that is categoric rubbish. We have never under any circumstances, joined the United Nations whatsoever. We stand on that, dear Robert. That's, that's not true. You need to investigate this and find out. Well, you are, you're, you're listening to sources who are trying to defame us in some way. No, Paul Gillis, promised... excuse me, sir, your representative at the time in the United Kingdom, um, the head of public affairs for Jehovah's Witnesses, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society in Britain at the time, I think his name was Paul Gillis, he wrote a letter admitting you joined the UN, but he came out with a cockable story that it was to get a library card. That doesn't explain the series of articles in The Awake. Go to JW.org. Do a search for United Nations, and you'll find that between 1992 and 2001, when they, when they were NGO members of the UN, they produced sycophantic, groveling articles supporting the aims and the ideals of the UN they had to comply with the UN Charter in order to maintain their NGO status. And you know why they did it? Yeah, you know why they did it? So when the governing body and the leaders travel anywhere in the third world, they can't get off the plane and be immediately arrested by some hostile government. Because although NGO status of the UN doesn't give you diplomatic immunity like an ambassador, it does carry a lot of clout. And no small country in the third Robert, world is going to arrest Robert. Jehovah's Witness leaders or any NGO member who get off a plane because they don't agree with their beliefs. Robert, as far as we're concerned, uh, if we go to another country, we don't need NGO status. We apply to a government for permission. If they say no, then no it is. But we don't have to join the United Nations in any way to establish that kind of contact. In fact, we are recognised for our values and we are allowed to go into these countries to help and so on, and we don't need to go to the United Nations or become a part of that. Where you've got all that from, with deep respect to, to what you're saying to me, uh, that is categoric nonsense. I've got, it, letters, it, it, I got letters from the UN saying you were members between 1992 and 2001. That's on United Nations did, headed paper. Did, by, you, did, you, did you write to the United Nations? No, it's... it's did you get... Did it's, you get that second hand? Second hand. It's all over the internet. You were members of the UN from 1992 to 2001, and your representative in London admitted when he wrote to the Guardian newspaper, and I've read the correspondence back and forwards between him and the Guardian, he admitted you were members, but he said it was an accident. They, they took out... Um, somebody in the Jehovah's Witness organisation took out membership to get a library card, and that's not true, because the official... Uh, um, application form had to be renewed each year and it was signed by one of the governing body at the time. So it was done with the full compliance of the governing body. And you it's published and you published and you published articles in the Awake, mostly the Awake. One article was in the Watchtower um, to comply with your NGO status, praising the UN, praising the UN Charter and praising the ideals of the UN. Because you had to do that to maintain your NGO status. And when the Guardian broke the story that you were members of the UN, 
on the 8th of October 2001, you left the very next day. We, we would, uh, you, you, you're, you're exaggerating something there. We do commend governments for what they do for people, right? But we are not and never have been part of the United Nations. You were NGO member. You took out NGO status. That means non-governmental organizations. NGO status for nine years yeah, between 2000, yeah. between 1992 and 2001. And you are still not the parent organization, Jehovah's Witnesses of Pennsylvania or Jehovah's, the Watchtower, sorry, the Watch, let me say it right. Well, the Watchtower what, Bible and what? Tract Society of New York and the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania have lots of subdivisions and sub companies, well over 100. One of the sub-companies is Jehovah's Witnesses in Europe, and they are members of, an, of another NGO, United Nations NGO affiliate. Um, I forget all the... Um... We have different branches in yeah. different countries, right? When, when, we say non when you say non-governmental organizations, that means that we're non-governmental, that we're not involved in government, therefore we're not members. Now, NGO is a status. You apply for NGO status, NGO membership of the UN as an NGO. That means non-governmental organization. I think there's about one and a half thousand companies and charities and, and various organizations that have NGO status at any one time. And the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society was a part of them. Even today, you are still affiliated indirectly with the UN through OSCE. Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. That and, the sub I talk to them, though. and the sub company, Jehovah's Witnesses in Europe, are members of OSCE, Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, which is another United Nations NGO affiliated with the United Nations. So we would cooperate with governments because uh, if you look at Romans 13, we accept the authority of governments. Right, that's what these governmental organisations are, but it doesn't mean to say that we are part of the United Nations. No, that's I said I said you took out NGO status. The NGO means non-governmental organisation. For nine years, you had NGO status of the UN as an NGO, and to comply with that, you published numerous articles in the Awake, one in the Watchtower. One, in, one or two in, in other pamphlets and other literature where you um, praise the ideals and the aims of the UN, usually in the Awake magazine. And those articles are still up on jw.org. Just do a search for United Nations and check and see the groveling articles that they published between 1992 and 2001 where they were members of the UN as NGO I, I, status. I, I, I take exception to that word groveling. We have groveled to nobody. Jehovah's Witnesses have stood out for their principles in nation after nation and been recognised for that. So I would take exception to what I'll tell you what, uh, Robert, you've got your own views, we've got ours, this is just an argument. I think we'll leave it there, OK? You, you have your view, you're all right to it. We would disagree with your views. Can we leave it there? OK, thank you for your time. Okie doke. Okie dokie. Bye-bye. Bye now.